Shalom. I'm Eddie Chamnifi Break Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be sharing with you regarding the current status of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process, and it is as follows. According to Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, if there is ever going to be a Palestinian state, everyone is going to have to adjust their ideas of sovereignty. Netanyahu said that the only way to ensure that territory ceded by Israel does not turn into a third Iranian enclave around Israel's borders is to have a long-term Israeli security presence inside a future Palestinian state. So we have to find a security solution that is real, and I think that it is possible. To do this, he said, I think we have to adjust our conceptions of sovereignty. I don't know if there's absolute sovereignty anywhere. I don't see it in the economic field. We're all tied to international structures. We're all tied to limitations. And I think we have to think about having these security arrangements, which over time could be made shared security arrangements, but that's the way to keep Israel safe, to keep the Palestinian Authority intact, and ultimately to secure peace. The Palestinians have made it clear that they are adamantly opposed to any protracted Israeli security presence anywhere in a proposed future Palestinian state, including along the Jordan River. In a recent meeting with U.S. President Barack Obama, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that, among other things which happened in that meeting, was that he had agreed to an American framework proposal whereby Israel would negotiate peace with the Palestinians on the basis of the 1967 ceasefire lines with territorial swaps. He added that in discussions with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, it was understood that Israel had several reservations about details of the plan which would have to be ironed out. In order to meet with Netanyahu, Obama demanded that Netanyahu declare his commitment to a two-state solution before the meeting or risk another crisis in the relations between Israel and the United States. It is likely due to this reason that Netanyahu had to clarify before the meeting that he is still committed to a two-state solution in exchange for recognition of Israel as a Jewish state by the Palestinian Authority. The United States was dissatisfied with Netanyahu's speech at the United Nations General Assembly in late September, where he did not specifically mention the two-state solution. Israel TV reported that U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is seeking to hold direct intensive talks between Israel and the Palestinians under the auspices of regional Arab powers. Kerry wants negotiations to last two months and involve nations such as Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. In addition, U.S. President Barack Obama is expected to request of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to publicly express a positive attitude toward the 2002 Saudi-drafted Arab Peace Initiative, if not by endorsing it wholesale, at least welcoming its general intent in order to help enlist Arab nations to support the new initiative. In his meeting with Obama in the United States, Netanyahu said, Something was changing in the Middle East, offering a new commonality of interest between Israel and leading Arab states, and I think that we should work very hard together to seize on these common interests and build a positive program to advance a more secure, a more prosperous, and a more peaceful Middle East. I remain committed to a vision of peace of two states for two peoples based on mutual recognition and a rock-solid security arrangements on the ground, he said. The U.S. and Israel should think outside the box and see how we can recruit the Arab countries to advance this very hopeful agenda. The Swedish new government indicated that it wants to be the first member of the European Union to recognize the state of Palestine. During his inaugural speech, Sweden's Prime Minister Stefan Löfven said the conflict between Israel and Palestine could only be solved with a two-state solution, negotiated in accordance with international law. The two-state solution requires mutual recognition and a will to coexist peacefully. Sweden will therefore recognize 
recognize the state of Palestine, he said. Several European countries, including Hungary, Slovakia, and Romania, have given their recognition of Palestine as a state, but did so before they became members of the European Union. Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad Malki welcomed Lafven's announcement and called on other European Union countries to follow suit. In the name of the Palestinian people and the Palestinian leadership, we thank and salute the Swedish position, Malki said. Sweden's ambassador to Israel has been summoned for a reprimand meeting at the foreign ministry in Jerusalem after Lofven made the announcement. Israel Foreign Minister Evigor Lieberman said that Lofven's announcement was unfortunate, as he likely has yet to have enough time to delve into matters and understand that the side which has been a spoiler for the past 20 years in advancing an agreement between Israel and the Palestinians Palestinians has been the Palestinians, Lieberman said, and that the Swedish Prime Minister Lofven needs to understand that no declaration and no step by an outside player can replace the direct negotiations between the sides in a solution that will be part of a comprehensive agreement between Israel and the entire Arab world. The United States called the decision by the new Swedish government premature and expressed its disapproval of the decision. U.S. State Department spokesman Jen Psaki said, The United States believes that the peace process is one that has to be worked out through the parties to agree on the terms on how they'll live in the future of two states living side by side. As a result, the Swedish embassy in Israel softened its position regarding the recognition of Palestinian statehood, saying it favors peace negotiations to unilateral recognition of a Palestinian state. Sweden said that it will recognize a Palestinian state at the end of negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. Meanwhile, the British Parliament voted on October the 13th to recognize the state of Palestine. The vote was 274 to 12. However, the vote has no practical significance since it does not oblige the British government to change its current policy of recognizing Palestine only after a peace deal is reached between Israel and the Palestinians. Palestine Liberation Organization Executive Committee member Hanan Ashrari said that the vote was both a principled decision and a significant step toward justice and peace. Our right to self-determination has never been up to negotiation, she said in a statement released by the Palestinian Authority. The recognition of Palestine is not contingent upon the outcome of negotiations with Israel and certainly not something that we will trade for. This claim is not only unfair but immoral. This vote sends the right message to the British government and the rest of Europe. It will enhance the European voices calling for the recognition of Palestine and will create the right environment for the international community to grant the Palestinian people legal parity and rights. Israel said that the British motion undermines the chances to reach a real peace. The route to Palestinian statehood runs through the negotiating room, a statement from the Israeli embassy in London said. Premature international recognition sends a troubling message to the Palestinian leadership that they can evade the tough choices that both sides have to make and actually undermines the chances to reach a real peace, the statement went on to say. Recognition of a Palestinian state should be the result of a successful conclusion of direct peace talks between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. France's foreign minister said that the French policy should recognize a Palestinian state only if doing so would help achieve peace, not as a symbolic gesture. However, if negotiations between the Palestinians and Israel fails, France would not shirk its responsibilities but would recognize the Palestinian state, the minister Laurent Fabius said. France has said that when the proper time comes that it will recognize a Palestinian state. Until now, the prevailing idea was that recognition of a Palestinian state should be linked to negotiations, Fabius said. But if negotiations were to prove impossible or have no conclusion, then France will naturally have to assume its responsibilities. Palestinian chief negotiator Sab Arakat said that the Palestinians will launch a diplomatic push in November to gain international recognition for an independent Palestinian state in spite of Israeli and U.S. warnings against it. Arakat said that if Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu believes that he can sustain the status quo and that will do that for him, 
Forget him. This will not last beyond November. We will not take it any more. Business, as usual, is no more, said Arakat. In addition, Palestinian leader Nabil Sha'ath said that a political war will begin if there is a negative response to Abbas's steps to gain recognition of a Palestinian state at the UN Security Council. This is the last chance for the world to accept the resolution that is currently being prepared for at the Security Council, Sha'ath said. If the U.S. vetoes the resolution, Arakat said that the Palestinians would respond by applying for membership in some 522 organizations, protocols, and treaties, a move aimed at gaining further recognition for a Palestinian state. The Palestinians would then demand that Israel fulfill all of its obligations as an occupying power. Arakat said that the PLO would remain the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. Elections would also be held for the Palestinian Presidency and National Council, but during the interim period, the PLO would effectively seize power. Before the elections, there will be elections for the PLO Executive Committee, with the participation of Hamas and Islamic Jihad, and the Executive Committee will become the temporary government for the occupied Palestinian state, and the National Council will be considered the Parliament of the Palestinian people, he said. Under pressure from the United States, the Palestinians have agreed to delay by two months its plan to seek a UN Security Council resolution calling for a recognition of a Palestinian state at the Security Council. This will give U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry two months to present his own plan and to pressure Israel. The Palestinians are conditioning a resumption of talks with Israel on Israel presenting a map with its borders and a full cessation of settlement construction during the talks. The Palestinians said that they are willing to return to negotiations with Israel, but not according to the old mechanisms. Finally, according to a former U.S. envoy to Israel, the personal relationship between Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Barack Obama is so poor that it could seriously hurt otherwise strong bilateral ties between the United States and Israel. The relationship between the two leaders is worse than I've ever seen a relationship between a president and a prime minister, said Daniel Kurtzer. There's no trust between them. There's a growing lack of respect. There's a sense of, I'd say, even betrayal. Well, that's going to conclude this week's report where we shared with you regarding the current status of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process wherein the Palestinians are seeking for recognition of a Palestinian state based upon 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital at the UN Security Council. However, the United States has requested that the Palestinians delay the move by two months in order to give the United States time to pressure Israel regarding the matter. These events are happening while it's being reported that the personal relationship between Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Barack Obama is at an all-time low. If the United States vetoes the Palestinians' request to be recognized as a Palestinian state based upon 67 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital at the U.N. Security Council, the Palestinians are threatening to join various other UN organizations, including the International Criminal Court. Then we shared with you how Sweden, Britain, and France is ready to recognize a Palestinian state upon the conclusion of successful peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians. So how will these things cause the peace process to move forward in the future? Only time will tell. Until we do it again, Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen.